hello and welcome back to my book club I know it's been a really long time since I posted a video um, but that's because it took me a really long time to read this book uh, the book that we're gonna be talking about today is Victoria very simply uh, by Daisy Goodwin this book is actually a um, like a TV show now in the back of the book in the, the acknowledgments section the author talks about um, writing this book for TV or it's being made into a TV show um, TV series called Victoria so if you're interested in just watching the TV series I suppose you could do that too um, but this is the book that we're going to be talking about today um, Victoria the book um, is 401 pages long and um, it's not super thrilling which I often feel like is kind of more it, it reminds me of like older classic books where there's not a ton of stuff that happens uh, which is I feel kind of the same with Victoria so the, this book follows Victoria from um, kind of when she first finds out that she is the queen um, through her engagement to her husband Albert and so it does not encompass very many years of Victoria's life. Um, it's when she is a brand new queen. She's 18 years old, uh, if I remember correctly, when she becomes a queen. And um, the first kind of introduction that we get to Victoria is kind of an interaction um, or the relationship between her and her mom. And her mom kept Victoria as if you would keep something that's very fragile. Victoria was never allowed to sleep in a room by herself. She was never allowed to um, walk down the stairs by herself. All of her food was very bland and um, people had to taste it to make sure that it wasn't poison, that kind of stuff, uh, because her mom knew that she was gonna be the queen someday and it actually took Victoria a really long time to realize how close to the throne she actually was. Um, and when she figured it out, it was kind of like, oh, <laughs> like this could actually happen for real. And eventually it does happen. So Victoria, um, as soon as she finds out that she is the queen, she moves into Buckingham Palace, which is brand new at the time. Um, and she becomes the queen. And one of the issues that I had with this book at the beginning, which I feel like kind of um, works itself out by the end, is that Victoria is kind of annoying <laughs> at the beginning and um, she doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities at the beginning she's very headstrong which is cool I like that um, but a little bit headstrong to the point where it kind of doesn't make sense and you know what I think there's a possibility that this is on purpose because she's 18 years old. She's never run a country before and now all of a sudden she's being thrown into it. Um, but yeah, Victoria is not a super lovable character at the beginning, uh, which kind of kills me because I really love the whole Victoria story. Um, I think she's pretty awesome. So at the beginning, she's kind of annoying, kind of foolishly headstrong. And um, she really, kills her mom not literally figuratively kills her mother because um, her mom puts her faith in somebody that she shouldn't and Victoria hates this guy that her mom puts uh, her faith in and they're kind of BFFs and whatever uh, she hates that, that guy and so her mom kind of blindly follows this guy who's kind of been very calculating Victoria's whole life and she hates him and so in turn she has this real bitterness against her mom so when it comes time for her to be queen and for her to have somebody to help her make all these decisions for the country uh, she turns to Lord M as she refers to him his name is Lord Melbourne and he is the Prime Minister at the time and this is kind of the second issue that I have with this book in particular um, in historical fictions you're allowed to take some um, some casual ways about things um, when you're talking about kind of relationships between people and you can kind of make events a little bit more uh, dramatic than maybe they were 
But in this case, with Lord Melbourne, um, in this book, the author kind of makes Victoria fall in love with Lord Melbourne, uh, when in reality, the situation with Melbourne was more like a father figure. Victoria's dad died when she was really young. And so when she becomes queen and Lord Melbourne uh, comes to kind of help her rule the country, um, she has this connection with him that's very kind of father-daughter. But in the book, it's way more romantic. And I just really wasn't a huge fan of that, um, which kind of that thread goes through the whole book as being an issue. Like people don't like her relationship with Lord Melbourne. And that's a big issue for the whole book. And then towards the end, um, you throw in the, the whole Albert deal, which actually Victoria ends up marrying Albert and they're like first cousins. So, I mean, that happened, but still a little bit weird. Um, there's not a lot of action in this book, and I would recommend the book if you are interested in Victoria or the time in general. But if you were not really interested in Victoria as kind of a theme, um, I don't know if that's something that you would want to pick up. Um, obviously, I'm a huge Victoria fan, and I picked it up, read it, put it down, read it a little bit more. Uh, it took me a really long time to finish it, actually. Um, but it's just kind of a casual, light read, and um, that's about it. Would I read it again? Probably, after I forget kind of the specifics. I might read it again, but more of just kind of like a, hmm, what am I going to read now <laughs> type of situation. Um, but that is Victoria. Uh, the next book that I am going to be reading is called Artemis, um, which I started last night. It is about a girl who lives on the moon so far, so um, we will review that one once I'm done with it.